we will give a brief introduction and recap about StarHub uh, for those uh, investors who are not familiar with our history. Um, the transmission process that we have embarked on, uh, the 5G highlights, which obviously um, all the telcos around the world are starting to embark on, including us in Singapore. Um, of 2020 highlights, um, the, the full year results that we announced sometime back in early February. Um, bear in mind that our Q1 results, um, which is coming up in May, has not been announced yet. And the guidance that we had given the market when we wrote, when we actually announced our full year results in February. Okay. Um, about StarHub, right? we have been, we've got over 20 years of uh, history. Uh, we actually were formed on April the 1st of the year 2000. So uh, come two days time, we will be celebrating our 25th, 21st anniversary um, of our existence. We were listed in October of 20. 2004. So effectively, we um, we've been listed in the SGX for now close to over 16 years. Uh, our market cap is uh, currently selling at 2.3 billion dollars, a P ratio of 15.3. Um, our total revenue is uh, around about 2 billion dollars, um, and this number has remained fairly constant over the years uh, with movements in our respective lines of business uh, over the over the period of time. We reported a net profit last year of $158 million, free cash flow of $388 million or 22 cents per share. Uh, and we declared uh, a dividend um, of 5 cents per share for last year, 2020. Um, we, we have uh, over um, 1.9 million mobile subscribers and that's both in the postpaid as well as the prepaid uh, segments of the market. Uh, over 300,000 um, pay TV subscribers and we're the second largest uh, broadband player, um, close to about half a million households uh, have our broadband subscriptions. Um, in the enterprise business, we provide connectivity. And on top of the connectivity solutions, uh, we provide the IT, ICT solutions as well. Um, a couple few years ago, about two and a half years ago, we formed um, together with, with Tomasic and Sign uh, in the cybersecurity space. Um, and last year, just uh, in, in July of last year, we acquired our first regional ICT business in Malaysia, Stratec. We've got uh, over seven data center facilities here in uh, Singapore, island-wide. And uh, just as a note, um, data center facilities uh, is a valuable resource uh, given that the, our government has taken uh, a view to, um, to confine the, the number of uh, data center uh, facilities that will be allowed uh, within this uh, this con this restricted space. So any DC facilities or data center facilities that um, any player has is actually a, a valuable resource at this point. Um, we've got we've invested in uh, numerous submarine cable system over the years, and this connects all the way to all the way to the US as well, um, and through many different countries in 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 the, in Asia and Europe. Uh, and we've got um, a, fair, a fair, uh, ex fair amount of extensive fiber connected systems through commercial buildings around Singapore, particularly in the central business district. Um, we look at our challenger spirit and I won't, uh, won't spend too much time here, but the most recent was our exclusive uh, launch of the Disney Plus, exclusive uh, partnership with Disney Plus, where we are now offering this to all our subscribers. Um, and we launched our, um, our uh, digital, fully digital uh, mobile brand called Giga a couple of years ago as well. Um, and we're getting ready to embark on the, the 5G as well. So um, this, the challenge spirit and innovation continues to be at the forefront of uh, everything we do here in StarHub. The transmission process. Um, three, about two and a half years ago, um, sometime back in October of 2018, we guided the market that uh, we were embarking on a three-year transformation, cost transformation um, journey. Um, we are in the third and final leg of the three-year journey. I'm very happy to report that we've uh, executed about 82% of our cost transformation, which was intended to be a $210 million savings over three years. Um, at this point in time, we've, we've executed 82% as well as planned for additional initiatives um, to, to be executed by October of 2021. 
and we expect to be able to realize more than the $210 million of, uh, of cost optimization that we started off um, about two and a half years ago. The next chapter of our cost transformation will be then rolled out as we embark on the digital transformation initiative. Um, basically, on the, uh, on the previous page, Amelia? Yeah. So on the on the dare strategy, we we our strategy is four prong. Um we acronym we we gave it an acronym called D A R E. So delivering market leading um, customer experiences. And we do believe that um in the telco industry it is extremely uh, critical um to stay ahead of, of providing our customers with value propositions as well as uh, uh, you know, a, a superior customer experience um, as well. Now, I mean, telcos around the world, including ourselves here in Singapore, consistently uh, have faced the challenge of meeting all the, the demands uh, and expectations of our customers. And this is something we continue to strive and improve on. Um, it's not something that we, we believe we have completed the journey on, and it's uh, something that we, we strive to, uh, towards perfection. Um, the next prong and the next pillar of our strategy is in accelerating value creation for quant businesses. We have invested a fair amount of, uh, of assets in, uh, in the 3G, initially in the 2G infrastructure, um, then the 3G infrastructure, 4G, which is more recently rolled out. Um, and now as we're embarking in 5G, we, we look at uh, how we can actually monetize all of these investments that we've made. Um, the in, the acquisitions uh, that we've made of our submarine cable system I mentioned, as well as the fiber system that we've rolled out across Singapore, something that we look to monetize. We we pride ourselves at running the organization in a in a mo most optimal manner, um, and strive towards operational efficiency and, and perfection and excellence uh, all the time. Uh, the next pillar would be the reali realizing growth from new opportunities, and this is where we've done. Uh, a host of mergers and acquisitions. Um, this is something that we embarked on sometime back in 2017 when we acquired a first cybersecurity systems integrator in the form of Excel. We then folded that into, um, into Ensign. Uh, we acquired Decrypt uh, back in 2018 and we also folded under Ensign to get the business synergies. Um, and as I mentioned last year, we acquired Stratec, which was uh, the, uh, the Infocom um, technology player, uh, ICT player, which rolls out solutions in Malaysia, as well as some of the other countries uh, in the Asia Pacific region. Um, and the final pillar is about enhancing uh, efforts to transform digitally. And this is something that uh, I will elaborate on on the next slide. So if you look at our digital transformation, this is, uh, we believe this to be a critical um, pillar to our, our future efficiencies that, and cost optimization that we will drive, as well as the superior customer experience um, that we, we endeavor to provide uh, our customers. Um, if we look at the number of digital sales transactions, we that has also increased over a period of time. We're looking to do conversion rates, um, and, and uh, we've actually recorded over 60% of conversion rates from offline to online. Um, and over 3 million service transactions that we've uh, done digitally. Um, through these digital transformation initiatives, um, we believe we'll be able to deliver additional cost uh, efficiencies, and this comes from lower co commission costs, uh, low lower operating leases in terms of physical touch points, um, and certainly lower manpower costs as well. Um, and, and we will be looking to do this through the partnership model for our IT transmission uh, stack. Um, 5G highlights. Um, the 5G standalone network is something that uh, we are starting to roll out from the beginning of 2021. Um, we rolled out our 5G non-standalone network last year in 2020 towards the second half of last year. Um, and all the handsets that are out there that are supported by the non-standalone network um, were available uh, last year in 2020. As the new handsets become uh, available that are supported by the, the 5G standalone network, um, and the, the term standalone refers to um, a brand new 5G network that's, that, that's not hinged on any existing network, unlike the non-standalone, which is an improvement or an enhancement of the 4G network. 
the in 2021, we expect to commercially launch the 5G standalone network that we are rolling out. Um, by the end of 2022, we will achieve 50% coverage of the entire island, uh, which is a requirement um, imposed on us by the regulators. And by the end, the five years in 2025, we would have achieved a nationwide coverage similar to the 4G network that uh, currently exists. Um, our, our 5G rollout, um, the, in terms of the, ra the radio um, access network or the, what we call the RAN, um, is something that we're sharing with uh, another operator. And that's a joint venture that we have established, which is a 50-50 joint venture. Uh, the other elements of the infrastructure, uh, which are the core, as well as the transmission and the security elements will be retained um, in, at the startup level. So the core, which manages uh, the types of services that are available on the network are actually managed by startup ourselves. Next slide. Um, so we, we have guided the market that uh, the capex for the 5G rollout will be uh, approximately $400 million over a five-year period. Um, not including the radio capex that uh, or capital expenditure that will sit in the JV. Uh, we are accounting for the um, JV on an equity basis, so we will not be consolidating the results of the joint venture um, because we, it is a 50-50 non-controlled entity owned by the two operators. The five um, next page, next page or next section on the five the the full year twenty twenty result. Um, if you look at the total revenue, last year obviously was a year that many organizations and many companies alike um, faced a significant headwind given the COVID situation. Um, as a result, you know, we had a, a fair amount of decline in our um, top line in our revenue. Um, and, and that was mainly due to some delays in projects as well as the, the risk travel restrictions that were imposed on, on the, the global situation that didn't allow any roaming revenue to be almost no rev roaming revenue to be recorded last year. Um, the result of which was naturally a, a decline in our profitability in, uh, in EBITDA as well as net profit. Um, but you will see that we've uh, through all the cost efficiency actions that we've uh, rolled out, we've managed to maintain uh, margins at a pretty healthy level. Um, last year, um, we generated a, a, a pretty high level of uh, free cash flow of $388 million or 22 cents. Um, and this was achieved um, through significant improvements in uh, working capital management. Um, I won't go into all the other slides um, because those were all the results that we actually rolled out uh, and announced to the market about uh, two months ago. Just want to call out that our leverage ratio stands at 1.41 times at the end of 2020. Um, we have significant amount of liquidity uh, available in terms of um, credit lines from the banks as well as uh, the medium the medium term note that we have not drawn on, um, and we intend to use this for to fund our future growth plans as well. Um, the guidance and outlook. Finally, um, we've guided to a stable service revenue for next year, uh, or rather for this year, twenty twenty one versus twenty twenty. Um, a service beta margin of between 24-26%. Uh, and this decline is the result of, um, versus last year, is the, the result of uh, a full year of no, no roaming that we've assumed in these guidance. Um, assuming if some uh, of the border restrictions are lifted at some point in time during the course of the year, um, we do expect um, the roaming revenues to return in some shape and form. And we do expect, therefore, our service beta margins to be better than what we've guided. We are also investing uh, in the 5G um, that we've ro we are rolling out from this year, as well as the IT transformation that I mentioned during the tra digital transformation guidance. Um, these investments are all upfront payments uh, and expenditures, and we do expect the benefits to come in from 2022 onwards. So in other words, there's a upfront expenditure investment, which will be recorded there, where there's no um, revenue that's being matched to it. and that, that benefit will come in in subsequent years and therefore the margins will be better from 2022 onwards. Our CapEx guidance excluding 5G is 9 to 11%. Um, and our CapEx guidance for 2021 is higher because we expect to, um, to be awarded a, a number of um, key enterprise projects which require us to invest um, capital expenditure upfront for our customers. 
Our dividend, um, we maintained our dividend policy of 80%, uh, the higher of 80% or five cents. Um, and that, that is something that we've guided to the market. So we are, get, we are assuring our shareholders that we will at least pay five cents as dividend for the year 2021. Um, or if that 80% of net profit number becomes higher than five cents, we may pay a, a number which is higher than five cents. So with that, um, that concludes um, our, our deck and the priorities that we are focusing on is just as a recap, the transmission initiatives that we are, we are focusing on uh, in terms of the digital transmission initiatives to realize the operational efficiencies uh, going forward and the transmission of our business model. The best in class customer experience, which is something which is at the core of anything that we do here in StarHub, um, and innovation that we endeavor to roll out and provide to our customers. The 5G rollout, um, which is uh, certainly an exciting part of the evolution of the telco industry um, and the monetization of our 5G network thereafter and focusing on driving growth um, in all the uh, new acquisitions and in organic uh, ventures that we've taken on. So these will continue to be at the forefront of everything that we do in StarHub to deliver shareholder value at the, at the, at the uh, as our ultimate uh, um, goal.